Dear students, now we are going to discuss about the working capital management. This is very very important topic in each and every organization. If you are going to take a corporate, the corporate needs two types of finance. The first one is long term finance and the second one is short term finance. So the short term finance, what are the different types of short term finance available for an organization? The first one is working capital management, second one is cash management, third one is inventory management and the fourth one is receivables management. Now we are going to discuss about the working capital management. Why I am going to discuss about the working capital management is this is a very very important area in the organization. Now we will see what is the meaning of working capital management. The working capital management refers to the finance needed to meet out the day to day expenses in an organization. This is called as working capital management. Now we can see the two concepts of working capital management. The first concept is net working capital and the second concept is gross working capital. Now we can see the meaning of net working capital. The net working capital involves the current assets plus the current liabilities and the gross working capital it is the amount invested in current assets only. So this is the concepts of working capital. Classification of working capital. The classification of working capital will be divided into two categories. First one is fixed working capital. Second one is variable working capital. In the fixed working capital the amount will not be changed at any circumstances. So the example of fixed working capital is rent. So the rent is not going to be changed at any circumstances. And the variable working capital the amount will be changed from time to time. The example is wages. If you are going to pay the wages for one person, you may pay wages for 20,000 rupees and another person, you may pay wages for 12,000 rupees also. So the wages will change from time to time. Then next we are going to see about the sources of working capital. As far as the sources of working capital is concerned, we can divide the sources of working capital into two categories. First one is long term sources, second one is short term sources. As far as the long term sources is concerned, we can classify into three categories. First one is issue of shares and second one is issue of debentures and the third one is sale of ideal fixed assets. So normally if you are going to issue of shares that time you can get, get back your money within 90 days or within 100 days. So this is going to be helpful for the organization. And the second one is issue of debentures. So if you are going to issue the debentures this is also going to be helpful for the organization that too for the working capital management. Then the third one is sale of idle fixed assets. The sale of idle fixed assets is the asset which does not going to earn anything to the company. So that type of assets we are going to identify and we are going to make a sale. So these are all the three long term sources of working capital. And while coming to the short term and medium term sources of working capital, this can be divided into two categories. The first one is external sources and the second one is internal sources. As far as the external sources is concerned, the first one is trade credit that is if you are going to purchase the raw material that time the company will give some discount. So that is called as trade credit and the second one is factoring and this will be the enormous one and this will be useful for the small traders and the third one is customer advances. As far as the customer advances is concerned, this will be given for a peculiar items this which will not be available in the market. As far as the external sources is concerned and second sources of working capital is internal sources of working capital. In the internal sources of working capital the first one is depreciation. Each and every organization they will maintain depreciation for the fixed assets. So this depreciation amount will be utilized for the purpose of working capital and the second internal sources is intercorporate deposits and loans. If we are having a sister concern in our company from the sister concern we can collect fund without any interest. This is the second internal sources. The third internal sources is reserves and surpluses. It is a mandatory for each and every organization to provide the reserves and surpluses. From your profit you have to transfer 20 percentage of amount to the reserves and surpluses. So this will be the another internal sources of working capital. Next we are going to discuss about the assessment of working capital or determinants of working capital. If we are going to run the organization that time we have to denote what is the amount required for a month or for a week. 
So, for this we have to assess the working capital requirements. For assessing the working capital requirements, we have to discuss some points. So, what are the major points for assessing the working capital requirements? The first and foremost important point is the nature of the business. What is the nature of the business? Either your business is a seasonal one or your business is an unseasonal one. For example, if you are running a seasonal business, that time you may require a normal working capital and at the same time if you are going to running a unseasonal business, that time in a particular time you need a very large amount of working capital. So, it depends upon the nature of the business and the second point is the size of the business. For example, if the business size is a small scale, that time the working capital requirements may be around some 2000 rupees or some 3000 rupees and if your size of the business is a medium term, so medium scale business means that time you need a amount of 5000 to 7000 and the third one is if your size is a large scale, so that time you may require a amount of 10,000 to 20,000 rupees. This we have to decide at the early stage and the third one is in the assessment of working capital terms of credit. What is the terms of debtors? What is the payment? All these things we have to while considering all these things we have to consider what is the debtor amount, what we are going to pay and when we are going to receive the amount. Based on this we can make a payment and we can make a receivables amount also. This is a very very important thing in the working capital management and the fourth one is labor availability. If we are running a working capital management that time we have to see the labor availability. What is the labor availability in the particular area? If the labor availability is very very easy that time we no need to spend that much of amount on the working capital. If the labor availability is very very tough you have to spend extra amount to capture the human resources. For example, if you are running your business in the Bangalore, so that time if you are going for a software person, so that time easily you can adopt a person who is knowing a software business and the same time if you are running a business, a software business in Tamil Nadu in a remote area, you may not get a such a person. So, that time you have to spend extra cost. So, this also we have to consider in the assessment of working capital. And the next one is competitors. Who are all the competitors? Today we do not have competitors, but in future we will have competitors. So, if you are having a competitors, that time we have to take a decision whether we are going to reduce the price or we are going to maintain in a same way. As far as the present scenario is concerned, we cannot say that I am going to maintain a price as a steady one. We have to reduce the price. This is very, very important one. So, we have to consider this competitor also. And the next important item is substitute of the product. Today, we may not have a substitute and tomorrow we may have a substitute of our product. For example, if you are going to take a soap, for the soap we are having a substitute. And if you are going to take water, for water also we are having a substitute in the form of juices and other things. And as far as the substitute is concerned, till now we do not have substitute for one product. So, can you guess the product? What is the product is? So, the product is nothing but you are consuming daily, maybe three times or four times, it depends upon a person who is consuming the food. So, what is the product is? The product is nothing but your salt. So, till now we do not have substitute of the salt, but in future we may have a substitute of the salt. If you are having a substitute of the salt, that time we may in a position to reduce the price of the salt. So, that we have to consider in the assessment of working capital. The next point in the assessment of working capital or determinants of working capital is inventory control because this working capital deals with the short term finance. So, as far as the short term finance is concerned, the important short term finance is raw materials. So, that is called as inventory control. A yeah, research has been conducted on the inventory control management. So, the research finding is saying that around 65 percentage of amount has been blocked in the inventory. So, each and every organization they have to concentrate on that inventory control. And the next point is banking connection. As far as the banking connection is concerned, we have to maintain a smooth relationship between the bankers. And if you are maintaining a smooth relationship between the bankers, that time our problem will be solved. For example, if you do not have money in your current account, but you are issuing a check for 70,000 rupees, but unfortunately you are having only 50,000 rupees only. What the banker will do means, if we are having a smooth connection, 
the banker will pass the check and immediately they will make a call to us stating that sir you are having only 50,000 rupees so kindly deposit the 20,000 rupees I have passed the check no problem in that sir here after you maintain the minimum balance in your account and issue the check sir so this is the banking connection and the next one is expansion and diversification as far as expansion and diversification is concerned our business is going in a smooth way that time you can go for expansion so if you are going for expansion that time you have to spend more amount for purchasing the raw materials and for purchasing the machineries so that also we have to decide at the assessment of working capital so these are all the important points to be discussed in the assessment of working capital and the next one is after assessing the working capital our actual requirement is 40,000 rupees in case if we are getting 60,000 rupees what are the benefits faced by the company for example if we are having excess of working capital what are the benefits faced by the company the first and foremost benefit is the company will have the excellent product that is if they are having sufficient fund in their hand the company will go for a maintenance so that time you will get the quality products and in the market your product will be stated as a quality product and the second benefits faced by the company is your cost of production is going to be reduced and if your cost of production is going to be reduced automatically your profit is going to be increased the third one is repayment of long term loans because as far as the excess of working capital is there that time the company will go for the repayment of long term loans why the company is going for a repayment of long term loans a study has been conducted which loan is going to be a benefit one either the short term loan is a benefit one or the long term loan is going to be a benefit one as far as the long term loan is concerned the company is paying the highest rate of interest so it is beneficiary to pay the long term loans if you are going for a short term loans that time we are paying a lowest rate of interest and we are paying for a lowest period only so these are all the benefits faced by the company if there is any excess of working capital and the second thing is if there is any inadequate of working capital already i have told about our working capital requirement is 40000 rupees instead of 40000 rupees we are getting only 20000 rupees so what are the problems faced by the company the first one is the cost of production is going to be increased because we don't have sufficient fund to make the repayment so automatically our cost of production is going to be increased and the second one is if you don't have sufficient fund in our hand we may not go for a maintenance so that time we may not get the quality products so automatically your product value is going to be reduced so your profit is going to be reduced and the third one is we may not maintain a credit worthiness among the suppliers so that time automatically whatever you are going to purchase if you are ready to make a purchases for highest amount also that time also the suppliers will not be in a position to supply the raw materials to your organization so these are all the problems faced by the company if there is any inadequate of working capital and the next one is working capital forecasting techniques for working capital forecasting techniques we are having three types of techniques the first one is person sales method and the second one is regression analysis method and the third one is working capital cycle method in the first method person sales method in this we are going to see what is the sales and what is the working capital requirements this sales and working capital requirements will be same at one position this we can consider by considering the past data so by seeing the past data we can come to a conclusion what is our working capital requirements if the organization is very very small so this person sales method is going to be useful and the second method is regression analysis method this is purely a statistical method and with the help of the graphical representation we are going to see the sales and the working capital the sales and working capital will be same at one point so that point we are going to consider as our working capital requirements so these are all the two points normally the company will adopt and the third point is working capital cycle method this will be the accurate method for assessing the working capital but most of the companies they will not follow this types of method because the workload involved in this working capital cycle method is very very high so normally the company will not go for this types of method if the company is going for a working capital cycle method that time 
they will get the exact working capital requirements. Now, what is this working capital cycle method? This is a simple process. You will have a cash in your hand, the cash will be converted into raw materials and the raw material will be converted into work in process and the work in process will be converted into unfinished goods and the unfinished goods will be converted into finished goods and the finished goods will go for the sales and the sales will be converted into cash. So this is called as working capital cycle method. So for each and every stage we have to maintain a record and we have to clearly discuss about what problems the company will face at any circumstances. So this is very very peculiar thing. and. Each and every company they have to concentrate on these things. If we are going to concentrate on these things, definitely our working capital requirements will be a normal one. There will not be any problem in our working capital requirements. And the next one what we are going to discuss is working capital financing policy. For working capital financing policy, we are having three approaches matching, aggressive and conservative approach. As far as the matching approach is concerned, here we are going to use the short term fund and the long term fund. As far as the aggressive approach is concerned, we are going to use only the short term fund. As far as the conservative approach is concerned, we are going to use only the long term fund. Now we have to come to a conclusion which approach is going to be benefit for the organization. As far as the approaches, we have to concentrate on three items. The first one is what is the cost involved in the item and the second one is what is the profit involved in the item and the third one is what is the risk involved in this three approaches. As far as the first approach is concerned, the cost will be moderate and the risk will be moderate and the profit will also be moderate. And as far as the second approach is concerned, this is the aggressive approach. We are going to use only the short term fund. So the cost will be very, very low and the risk will be very, very high at the same time the profit will also be very, very high. And the third approach is concerned we are going to use only the long term assets. So in the long term assets the cost will be very, very high and the profit will be moderate and the risk will be also a moderate one. Now we have to come to a conclusion which approach is going to be useful for the organization. As far as the three approaches is concerned we should have a limited risk that is the lowest risk and the cost should be very, very low and the profit should be very, very high. But we do not have a combination, this type of combination in this three approaches. So what we have to do? So by having the base of this three approaches, they have derived one method called as trade off between risk and profitability. Now what this method is saying? They are concentrating on the long term assets returns only. Please confirm that we are not going to use the long term assets, but we are going to consider the long term assets returns only. And the second thing is the discounts what we are going to get it in the way of making a payment or receiving a payment. If you are going to make the payment on time and receive the payment on time, that time the supplier as well as the customer they will give a discount. So this discount will play a major role in the trade off between the risk and profitability. Now you will come to a conclusion that we are not going to use the long term assets, but our return is going to be a steady one so that we are going to take the long term assets return and with the help of the long term assets return and with the help of the trade credits that is the discounts, we are going to manage this working capital financing policy. If we are going to manage in this way, whether our problem will be solved or not means for this question, the each and corporate, each and every corporate they have to answer because all these things will vary from corporate to corporate. We cannot say that this is a standard solution for making a working capital financing policy. Some companies they will go for aggressive approach, some companies they will go for a matching approach and some companies they will go for a conservative approach. So there is no conclusion for this approach. This is between the corporates and the person who is working for the department. So with this we are completing the working capital management and the second sources of short term finance is inventory management. As I told about the inventory management, I already told about that each and every organization they are spending nearly 65 percentage of amount in the inventory. Whether it is good for the organization means definitely it is not good for the organization because after 5 years or 6 years the inventory if you are going to block 65 percentage of amount in the inventory definitely your inventory is going to be blocked and what is the ultimate result is the company is going to face the loss not the profit. So each and every company they have to concentrate on the inventory. As far as the inventory is concerned we have to go for the inventory control. So how we are going to control this inventory? For the controlling the inventory we are having some techniques. So what are all the techniques available for the inventory control? The first and foremost technique is EOQ. 
what is the EOQ is saying? The EOQ is nothing but economic order quantity. At what time we can place the order? So that will be the economy to our organization. And the second one is ABC analysis. As far as the ABC analysis is concerned, it is nothing but always better control analysis. And as far as the always better control analysis is concerned, it is universally accepted method. Why it has been universally accepted method means they have divided the raw material into three categories. One is highest value raw material and the second one is moderate value raw material and the third one is lowest value raw material. For these three types of raw material, they will see the availability and they will see the what is the price of the raw material. Based on the availability and based on the price, they will purchase the raw material and if they are going to purchase the raw material in this way, the production will not be affected, your profit is not going to be affected. So this is the second technique that is available for the inventory control. And the third technique is continuous stock taking. If the company is going to take a continuous stock, for this the example we can quote some example that is bin card system. If you are going to maintain a bin card system, in the bin card system you will have we are detailed about each and every raw material that is available or whatever we are going to use it for the organization that will be available in the stores department. In the stores department, we are going to maintain a record for each and every raw material. For example, if there is a bolt for the bolt and nuts also, we are going to maintain a bin card and in the bin card, what we are going to record is what is the date of purchases, what is the quantity of purchases and all these things we are going to enter in the bin card. At the same time, when we have issued the raw material to the production department that also we are going to record it in the bin card system. And if you are going to record it, all these things, what we are going to get or what is the benefit the corporate is going to get means the benefit is ultimate benefit is the corporate can see what is the raw material that we are going to use in the organization that we are going to get. With this, we are completing the inventory control techniques. Another important area in the inventory management is valuation of inventories. We can value the inventories in three ways. The first one is based on the cost price method. Second one is based on the market price method. And the third one is based on the standard price method. As far as the based on the market price method is concerned, we are going to see the nearest market price and based on that we are going to value the stock. And the second one is based on the standard price method or fixed price method. In the fixed price method, we are going to make an average of three or four purchases and on that value we can do the valuation of the stock and the third, third one is based on the cost price method. In this already I have told about continuous stock taking method. So this continuous stock taking method is going to be helpful for the based on the cost price method. In the cost price method we are going to value the stock on the cost price only. We are not going to manipulate the values of the stock where we have purchased. So these are all the methods for valuing the stock. So with this we are completing the inventory management and the third sources of short term finances receivables management as far as the receivables management is concerned in the present scenario it is not an easy thing to run the organization entirely for the cash we have to go for the credit if you are going for a credit that time we have to take a decision so what are the decisions we are going to take as far as the decision is concerned we have to take a decision in the cost associated with the extension of credit in the cost associated with the extension of credit the first and important area is collection cost as far as the collection cost is concerned Either you are going to appoint a collection agents or you are going to appoint the bankers as a collection authorities. As far as the collection agent is concerned, they will work for the commission. If they are going to work for the commission, that time they will not maintain a good rapport with the customers. So there we are having a chances for losing a customer. If you are going to appoint a bankers, so there is also a problem in the bankers. If you are going to appoint a bankers, what they will do means if the customer is going to deposit the amount that time they will make it for a collection and they will send the amount for the head office account. So there we are having a problem. So instead of this, if you are going to open a branches, so that time what is the cost involved in opening the branches? So this is called as administration cost. Opening the branches is called as administration cost. And in the administration cost, if you are going to open a branches, we have to pay rent for the particular building and we have to pay the salaries for the managers, we have to bear some expenses. So if you are going to bear the expenses, what is the profit we are going to gain? So that also we have to consider. And the next one is default cost. If the person is not going to pay the amount, so that time either you are going to write off the cost or you are going to carry forward the cost. If you are going to write off the cost, how you are going to manage this return of cost? Because as far as the, already I have told about the working capital management, 
terms of debtors and creditors we have to consider in this this will play a major role. So, we have to take a decision in this particular area. The last one is overdue cost. If there is any overdue cost at that time we are going to write off the cost as the entire thing. If we are going to write off the cost whatever the cost involved in carrying the cost from one period to second period. So, how we are going to manage. So, in that area we have to take a decision. So, these are all the decision areas if we are going to extend the credit we have to take a decision. And the next one is credit standard. As far as the credit standards is concerned each and every organization they will maintain two types of credit standard. The first one is easy credit standard and the second one is tough credit standard. If a person is not paying the amount on the stipulated time whether we are going to make a supply to the same person or we are going to stop the supply to the same person. So, that we have to take a decision. So, if he is existing customer, if we are going to apply the tough credit standard, so we are in a position to lose the customer. And the same time if you are going to apply easy credit standard, that time the customer will have in his mind that whenever we are going to pay, so supplier is going to send the raw material to the company. So, why do not we pay in a later period? So, like this he will come to a conclusion. And the same time if he is a new customer, that time we have to consider what type of credit standard we are going to apply either the easy credit standard or the tough credit standard. If it is the easy credit standard for the new customer, so the customer will have in the initial stage itself whatever we are going to pay. So, that time customer is going to accept. So, that we have to take a decision and if we are going to adopt the tough credit policy we are going to lose the particular customer. So, that we have to take a decision in the credit standards. And and the next thing is we have to see some credit terms. What are the credit terms is what is the cash discount period, what is the cash discount we are going to give, what is the cash discount amount we are going to give, what is the credit agreement, what agreement we are going to make with the particular customer. So, as far as the agreement is concerned cash discount and cash discount period this will vary from customer to customer. How he is going to pay the amount, whether he is going to pay the amount on the 30th day or the 40th day. So, that we have to consider and what is the amount of purchases made by a particular customer. So, that also we have to consider. So, these are all the important areas in receivables management and one more thing we have to discuss in the receivables management. Recently, some of the companies they are opening a department called as credit control department. So, what is the use of this credit control department? The work of the credit control department is they have to collect the information about their customers. The customer they are purchasing the raw material from our company or they are purchasing the raw material from other companies. The information collected by the credit control department they have to give the information to the sales department and the sales department may take action against the credit control department and it is not an easy thing to collect the information about the customer because if you are going to ask from the company who is purchasing in your company so they will not give the information. But anyhow we have to collect the information and we have to give it to the sales department. So, this is going to be helpful for the organization. So, with this we are completing the receivables management and the next one is cash management. Already we are talking about the working capital management, inventory management and receivables management. For all these things we need cash management. Now, what is the use of this cash management? With the help of the cash management only we are going to deal with the working capital, we are going to deal with the receivables management, we are going to deal with the inventory management. So, this cash management is very very useful for each and every organization. Now, in the cash management I am going to concentrate on the techniques of cash collections. As far as the techniques of cash collections is concerned, we are having three techniques of cash collections. The first one is lockbox system and the second one is concentration banking and the third one is playing on the float. And as far as lockbox system is concerned, this is a very very older concept in the techniques of cash collection. In the lockbox system, there in the bank they will kept a box and the customer has to go to the bank and they have to deposit that check in the lockbox system. And after a specific hours, the banker will open the box and they will deposit the check in the particular amount. So, this is called as lockbox system. As far as the supplier is concerned, they are not getting a benefit. So, by having the lockbox system as a base, they have developed one system called as concentration banking. What the concentration banking is says is, in the concentration banking, they are talking about the making the payment. At any time in the banking hours, you can make the payment. So, it is nothing but your ATM. And the third one is the playing on the float. The playing on the float is going to be useful for the customer and not for the suppliers. So, 
Now, in what ways it is going to useful for the customers? What the customer will do means they will give the outstation check and they will make a payment on the specific date and during that period, for example, they may take two or three days for collecting the amount. So, within that date, they will make another payment and by making another payment, they are going to get a discount and simultaneously, they are going to avail a discount from these customers also. Already, I have told about the working capital management. In the working capital management, the discount is going to play a major role. So, now we can get a, we can get a clear idea about these discounts. Now, we are coming to a conclusion. What we have discussed in the previous, now, we have discussed about what is the meaning of the working capital management how we are going to ascertain the working capital, what is the working capital financing policy, all these things we have discussed. And the second area is inventory management. In the inventory management, we have discussed about the inventory control techniques. And next one is valuation of stocks, how we are going to value the stock. And the third area is we have discussed about the receivables management. In the receivables management, what are the decisions areas we have to consider? All these things we have discussed in the receivables management. And the last sources of short term finance is cash management. In the cash management, we have discussed about the techniques of collection of cash. So, this is very, very important and we can say that this is the base of the sources of short term finance. So, with this, I am completing my lecture. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you.